Patricia Goldman Rakish is one of the most distinguished neuroscientists of her generation. Her research on the brain has brought a new understanding to the highest order of thought, giving us a scientific basis for the study of mental illness. I don't want to put too fine a point on her role as a woman neuroscientist because she was an astonishing scientist. Man, woman, doesn't make any difference. She was an astonishing scientist in the sense that um, she did work that was not just good, but was pathbreaking. Pat really revolutionized the field of neuroscience pertaining to the prefrontal association cortices. Before her work, people in science thought that this area of the brain was really beyond scientific inquiry. She was motivated by curiosity. She wanted to know how, how human brain works, but also was motivated that this understanding could help to alleviate suffering, which is so compelling in human mental disorders. And by understanding what prefrontal cortex does, she was able to reveal how dysfunction in this part of the brain is fundamental to the thought disorder and severe cognitive problems in schizophrenia. And this has totally changed the focus of the field of mental illness. After growing up in Peabody, Massachusetts, and graduating with honors from Vassar, Patricia received her Ph.D. from UCLA. She returned to the East Coast, working at the American Museum of Natural History and to the National Institute of Mental Health. In 1979, Patricia moved to New Haven, Connecticut, to join the Department of Neurobiology, newly created by her future husband and colleague, Pasco Rakish, at the Yale School of Medicine. Pat was one of, I think, five or six women at the time who had tenure in the School of Medicine in the basic sciences. So she was a pioneer in many ways. And she was very often, when she was in some important committee, National Academy or at Yale for that matter, she could be only woman in the committee. And I think that that took a lot of bravery, especially for a woman in those years, in the early years when she was forging ahead with her career, I don't think women were taken all that seriously. Pat Goldman was a real champion of young women in her lab. She was very sensitive to some of the needs of extraordinary women scientists who also, in addition to being scientists, were mothers and had other demands on their time. Well, I owe a great debt to Pat, actually. I'd say that she's the single reason that I am still in science. Some 22 odd years ago, I came to her and said, I, my husband wants to move, we're about to start a family, and many people would have said goodbye. But Pat said, in fact, let's find a way to make this work, and she did. She allowed me to continue working off-site at my home. I'm in science today because of that. Pat was a, a terribly important role model for all of women in neuroscience. Even those at a distance from her, seeing her success, we were able to envision our own lives in science. One of the uh, things I think that um, many women in my generation admired about Pat was her relationship with Pashko. So here we have two absolutely extraordinary, you know, top-rate neuroscientists with a beautiful relationship that incorporated work and life. During her 30-year exploration into the human mind, Dr. Patricia Goldman Rakish received recognition for her work at the highest levels, including being awarded the Lieber Prize, the Lashley Prize, the Fison Prize, and the Society of Neurosciences Girard Prize. She was president of the Society for Neuroscience. She was inducted into the National Academy. And all these break the ground for women who come after her. In 2003, at the age of 66, Patricia's life tragically ended when she was hit by a car while crossing the street in Hamden, Connecticut. Pat died at the peak of her career and her life unexpectedly crossing the street just a few blocks from her home. And that was shock for everyone and ended one 
still very active and beautiful life. The importance of Dr. Patricia Goldman Rakesh's contribution to the field of neuroscience was recognized after her death by the establishment of a number of prizes and lectureships in her name. But her greatest legacy may be the people and the future research she inspired. I think that I'm not alone in the people that worked with her in that we all carry some of her research forward, not just here but worldwide. Many people continue to do research and that is really her legacy. And I remember sitting listening to her talk and feeling as though a new universe had been opened to my understanding. That doesn't happen every day. Thank you.